Good afternoon, everybody, and thank furlough. It's yet another Friday. It's the 18th of September. This is episode number 77, believe it or not. And those of you who are old enough will know that 77 is Sunset Strip. But anyway, never mind. Um, yeah, one or two grins there, and the rest of you are thinking, what the hell is he talking about this time? But anyway, never mind. Um, it's, it's good to have you with us again. And um, it's a, a really sunny day out here, so I have the windows on, on my office come studio come dining room uh, a little bit open so if somebody roars past in a in an upraised motorbike or car or something you might you might suddenly get me bleaching out but uh, i am very pleased as always to have uh i was going to say my partner in crime it's probably not the right way of putting it but anyway hello uh jackie mount back again hi jackie hi hi everyone lovely to be with you again so my first question is, okay, um, how many of us can join together? How many of us have got a lockdown? You're not going to know, are you, really? <laughs> no, no, not really. I suppose it depends where you live at the moment. Um, what, if you're not in full lockdown where you can't have two families together or anything, then it's six people. And um, I, yeah. uh, I was talking to uh, my local butcher yesterday. And oh, hang on, let me just cut that off. I was talking to my local butcher yesterday who was saying that we were talking about Christmas turkeys, would you believe? And they were saying that with the, um, the, the maximum of six together, the turkey farmer's going to have a really tough time this year. So a slight, uh, you know, sad point for another, another group of people that might be struggling come at the end of this year. Yeah, I, 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 very from big. Like, I, Birmingham and the black country have yeah. been added. Now they, they are in more of a lockdown. They are talking about uh, perhaps closing down the entire country again for a yeah. short time. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. I can't, um, I thought, first of all, but the, the number of people with coronavirus was going up because we were upping the number of uh, tests, which is mm. certainly what's happened in other countries. Apparently, though, the, the number of cases is rising faster than the number of tests. So it's not just down to us testing more people. So it's quite worrying, isn't it, really? Uh, yeah, well, so we've only just we've only just started venturing out a week or so ago and as it's going to go into lockdown again. But, you know, so it's uh, it's limits the things I was planning to do over the next couple of weeks. But never mind. Well, I've got one or two things to talk about, which I'll talk about later. How are we doing on technical advice? Is there much going on in the technical uh, world? Not a huge amount, but there are a few bits and pieces come out this week. Um, with the uh, local lockdowns coming into place, there was an announcement came out from HMRC earlier this week that businesses can get local grants from the local authority if they're in a local lockdown and have to close their businesses down or retrench back. Um, it's um, for larger businesses, it's £1,500 for every three weeks. So £500 claimable every three weeks. If it's a smaller business where the rateable value or rent or mortgage is less than £51,000 per year, the grant is £1,000 for three weeks. So if you have clients who are in that area, lockdown areas might be worthwhile looking into that. That's done through the local authority. So a bit like, I think it was the bounce back loans came through local authorities. So you might like to have a look at that and see if, if that's applicable for you. Um, spoke uh, a couple of weeks ago about um, HMRC looking into fraudulent claims under CJRS. And I did give sort of some facts and figures. They are starting now to write to businesses that they want to uh, almost instigate an investigation with. They reckon uh, that there are, I'm just checking my figures, about 27,000 CJRS claims that look, quote, wrong, and that's HMRC speak for looking wrong, and they are <laughs> setting up an initial inquiry into 11,000 of those. Now, some of these may be uh, simple errors where the amounts that have been claimed don't quite match with the numbers of people that um, they've had on their uh payrolls before and the amount of salaries that were paid over the average over the last year on what they're claiming now so there's those there's the fraudulent ones who are claiming for people who are still they're still expecting to work now we've talked about that before um what's going to happen and what constitutes going to work and a number of those have actually been raised i think by whistleblowers who have contacted hmrc to say well, we're supposed to be on furlough, but our boss still expects us to do work from home, this, that, and the other, but he's still claiming. Now, I know there are a couple of members who have contacted me fairly recently about this, and we've sort of chatted about what they should do. Um, and again, it raises the issue on part-time flexible furloughs 
as for directors because um, how can you specify if a director's back at work part time and claiming part of their salaries under CGIs, how much are they actually doing? Slightly different case there for directors, sole directors, than I think for, for employees. But watch out for that one if you have a director who's on furlough and you think they might be uh, working full time rather than part time. Very difficult that one's going to be. And actually, our whistleblower line, which we published, we only started publishing it at the beginning of this year, I think it was. Um, yeah. is um, ringing hot off uh, at the moment because we're getting a lot of non-ICB members who see us as, as the voice of bookkeeping, which is brilliant, but they're ringing up to talk about their employers and uh, some people they know that are not doing it right, etc. We're, we're doing whatever we can with that and referring them on to the relevant authority or yeah. handling it ourselves, etc. So, um, you know, we're getting a lot of inquiries from our own members, as you and I have discussed over the last 77 editions at various times. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it would appear that a lot of people don't know where to go to get these questions answered. And I think they're a little bit concerned about going to the police or going to HMRC in case it's, it's, it's not a serious complaint or they, they won't be uh, listened to. So we are acting as a bit of a go-between go for that. So it's just uh, an extra string to our bow, albeit it's, it's not just the members. Yeah, well, the whistleblowing line is anonymous, or it can be anonymous if you want it to be. So mm. I know they are investigating those, but obviously they're taking them in order of what they see as priority and importance and the level of whatever fraud may or may not be going. Um, just a reminder that um, all VAT payments are now back to normal. Uh, we Remember, we had the deferred three months of back payments across the summer. Any of that returns being done now, should you should be paying. So I think end of June was the first one. So that was payment was due uh, middle of beginning of August. So you should be well back into VAT payments now and that deferred VAT payments are due by the end of the financial year. Um, now, there was um, quite a lot. I had a, a, a meeting with HMRC earlier this week and they were talking about time to pay and that sort of thing. So. Don't forget, if your clients are having difficulty paying their VATs, the current VAT, um, they can uh, go to the pay, uh, time to pay. And that, one of the things is possibly that that might be promoted slightly more that, uh, obviously they don't want too many people applying for that, but there is the time to pay. So do look out if your clients are um, unable to pay their VAT at the moment, they must have a time to pay agreement set up. Otherwise they will start to get penalties because the other thing that's happening is that the penalties are coming back into force now and all those lovely deferments that we've got there um, uh, now uh, penalties will come back. The only other thing I've got to say is that um, I've had some uh, correspondence from the pensions regulator this week and mm. they are also now stipulating that they are, quote, getting back to normal. Um, earlier this year, th there is a there is a requirement that if either companies or trustees who are the pensions company that you may pay into, if the pensions contributions are not being paid and their late clients, businesses are late with their pension contributions to the pension companies, there is a requirement to report that, uh, that the pension companies report that to TPR within 90 days of the default. Now that was extended out to 150 days and that reverts back from the 1st of Jan January, that time period reverts back to 90 days. So that's a way in the future. But if you happen to be involved in pensions of that form, you, uh, that's coming back in. And anything on the apprenticeship levy, um, things are beginning to go back to normal now. So um, watch, watch this space, really. I know we're still getting through some very difficult times, but HMRC, the pensions provider, the pensions companies, all those sort of people are now starting to revert back to situation normal as it always was. So watch out because you may very well get caught with penalties and fines and things and lots of letters in brown envelopes going around. So yeah, I'm, I'm, really well I'm, um, I'm a member of something called Transparency International and uh, we were just discussing a few minutes ago, Jackie, that uh, most of the time it's a little bit over what we have to do, but um, they're talking about lots of scams taking place people getting uh, fiddled out of their money, particularly uh, people who are coming up towards the end of their um, 
pensionable age and looking to retire or looking to buy in new packages and, and there's a lot of bogus stuff going on out there so i'm going to take part in something that's coming up shortly uh, to see if in fact we can get more information out for our members so that they can use it for themselves obviously but also share it with their clients but uh there seem to be so many people out there that are always looking for a fiddle it's, it's quite it's quite shocking really but um mm -hmm. you know, we'll yeah go one of one of the things that's happened is that the rules have changed and cold calling for selling pensions and things is i'm not sure if the law's come in but it's certainly due to come in um that it is now i think against the law for uh pension companies these sort of fraudulent pension companies or or, or proper pension companies to contact you and cold call and say if you bring your pensions from where you are to ours we'll give you a much better return and uh, there are was it 38 million pound a year or something is being lost it may even be more than that i can't remember the actual figure where people are yeah. being persuaded to transfer their pensions into something which actually um loses them a lot or all of their pension and of course once and there is no recourse against that at the moment so once that's gone and you signed it away i don't think there's any recourse to get it back um, there's something also happening at the moment, which, which a couple of our members have mentioned, and that is that they get a, a telephone on their mobile normally, a uh, telephone call with an 0845 number that immediately does one ring and disappears. So you ring them back and then they say, ah, thank you for calling. I have been trying to get hold of you. You filled in a form and I'm now talking to you about, and I'm sorry, I wanted to talk to you about your pension. I've had this myself. Now, apparently they do that single ring because they do that on a, a sort of, weird line but then as soon as you ring in they can say no they rang me i didn't ring them yeah and you're conned into it again you know so be careful with that one uh, it also happens with uh i keep getting one saying we understand you've had a car accident recently oh. you know and all this sort of stuff ah terrible they are the worst the car crash ones yeah okay so anyway um Oh, yes, Jeff Cavendish has come up um, on the quarter for VAT. Thank you, Jeff. Um, he says, just so you know, if you pay your quarter for VAT 1920 before the 21st of January, then HMRC are showing such payments as unallocated. Um, I have telephoned HMRC today. They say if the unallocated payment equals quarter for VAT, then you're up to date and it will be corrected in January 21. Um, okay, thanks for that, Jeff. Just so people are aware that if they, you know, when they are paying, um, if, I suppose it's a problem if your payments don't match an already submitted uh, or before the deadline, it, yes, it will go down as unallocated. So watch, watch out for that one. So thanks for that, Jeff. We've had a couple of hellos, one from Hidia Kaplan and one from Barbara Burek. So thank you both. Uh, lovely to have you with us and uh, wherever you're from. Uh, if, if you send us a hello, just say whereabouts you're from. I don't have, I'm not quick enough to quickly find you on the database and know where you're coming from. So if you're coming from some of our overseas or even um, some of our lockdown parts of the country or wherever it might be, uh, just give us a nod so that we know. Um, I've just had a, a report through this morning uh, from Companies House. It follows some feedback that uh, we were involved in some time ago about the use and purpose of Companies House and what you were doing with it, etc. Uh, I must admit it's 90 pages. It came through a couple of uh, hours ago. I haven't had a chance to read it yet, other than the introduction, which says that they're going to be doing more checks and more things. And I haven't got to the eye watering bit, which says they're going to be charging us for it, but I presume that's somewhere in there. But this is, uh, this is the latest government report. Um, we've done a lot with Companies House recently. And I last, last Friday, yeah, last Friday before this event, I was part of a panel talking about how professional bodies were working with Companies House and what our members thought. Uh, I did suggest that it felt a little bit as if we were the turkeys being invited to vote, vote for uh, Christmas that had already been put together, but I don't know. Um, and talking of Christmas, and Jackie, you just mentioned Christmas, and lo and behold, that little ping you might have caught there was my phone, and on there I've got somebody saying, have you thought about your Christmas tree yet? We're ready. Um, I don't know whether we can think about Christmas yet, to be honest. Oh. But uh, I'm certainly not thinking about buying a tree quite yet. No, well, I actually, anyway. I actually realised... Um, that uh, at the weekend last weekend I actually went to a garden centre for the first time and they were setting up all the Christmas goodies 
the snowmen and things and Christmas. Uh. Sca oh, scary, scary, scary. Far too soon. Um, and uh, up on the chat line, Paula Vasey Smith joined us. Hi, Paula. Not usually able to be here, but happy to share Furlow Friday. Yes, absolutely. Welcome to the Madhouse again, Paula. So nice to have you with us. Um, Jess, Actually, come back. 98 days to Christmas. Sorry? 98 days until Christmas. Oh, I don't want to know that. <laughs> oh, yep. Jesus. Well, yes. 98. It's been a, such a weird year, hasn't it? Um, yeah, right, so I think, um, uh, Jeff, your first comment on false positives, uh, not quite sure about that one. Perhaps you'd like to come back. Have you seen the number of false positives? Have I, have I, am I missing something obvious? Not sure. That says me. Yeah, and talking about things rushing rapidly towards us it's nine weeks until conference till the summit strikes again and just to let you know everybody i know everybody wants to know about this we, we have been taking our time um just this morning um we've been looking at a presentation by a company that's actually going to provide our software to enable us to do an absolutely fantastic online conference i know it's not what we all wanted but under the circumstances it's as good as it gets, as they say. Um, this piece of software is absolutely brilliant. It looks good, it looks slick. You can have all sorts of personal meetings on there. You can see who's talking, you can see who else is listening. Um, it makes Zoom look like something out of, uh, out of the old days. I mean, it's really brilliant. Um, and I've just signed a, something somewhere to say that we're gonna spend a fortune on it, but nonetheless, you know, you're worth spending money on our members. You really are because uh, you deserve the best and we try to give you that. So I think you're going to get the, the best of, uh, of what we're doing. So I think, that's, as I say, that's about nine weeks away. In fact, it's probably eight and a half weeks away now. What we'd like to know from you is, is there something in there that you particularly like to see or hear? Um, we already know you want to see Jackie and we wouldn't do it without her. Um, <laughs> and a couple of other people, you like to Ian Holloway that talk about pensions and um, uh, Mark Lee that talks about ethics. You want to see more of our money laundering team. Um, so we've got Steve and we've got Michael. Like they're all lined up, they're all ready to go. But in addition to that, we will have a few surprises as well. Some external speakers. Um, some you will recognise. Some you will really want to hear about, even though they're not household names. Um, so that is absolutely good. Now, the big thing is that uh, next year, obviously, it's our 25th anniversary, 1st of November, and we will be pushing the boat out. We're hoping that. We haven't got something else hitting everybody by then and we're all through this uh, COVID or at least we're all getting in injections to stop us suffering from it or something has happened because, you know, it would be wrong not to celebrate our 25th anniversary big time. Uh, and, you know, you know what ISAB is like when we push the boat out and that boat is definitely already on its way sailing. So we'll be talking to you about that shortly. And I got a call from uh, somebody, I think, yesterday saying, I, I want to save up some money. I said, well, I, I don't know how much it's going to cost or anything yet. They said, oh, that's all right. But can I pay you, I don't know, I forget what she is yes, I think it's £50 a month or something rather, so that I've got some in the bank and you've got it there so that whatever you come to, it's not going to be a big surprise. So I said, well, I can't do that at the moment, but it's a good idea. Uh, so I've set the people working on that to see if that is something we can do. So as soon as we know what we're doing, and we've got uh, several venues at the moment that we're working towards, um, but yeah, it's going to be fun. Going back to this year's conference, yes, it is all virtual. Um, we're going to, the, the whole week uh, is going to be global bookkeeping week. So we, we're tying up with our uh, colleagues from right the way across the world, etc. But the conference will be our two days. The middle day, Wednesday, is Razor Cup Day. And we really are going to be talking to you about doing something special. Uh, whether or not you'll be allowed to go out and have a cup of coffee or whether you do it from your office or where it is. I don't know. It doesn't really matter where you are. Um, and I'm sure from last year, you remember the picture of the lady uh, actually sitting on the loo while drinking her coffee because we caught her out. But um, we're hoping that doesn't happen too often this time. Um, and uh, those of you this year who will be joining us, I'm sure we'll have lots of children in the background and husbands and people getting in the way and wives and partners or whatever it is. But it should be absolutely fantastic. Um, we're also doing something, I think it's on the Thursday, we're covering our Eastern European countries and on the Friday we're doing 
something else which is completely slipped. Oh, the Commonwealth. We're doing com for Commonwealth countries. So it's going to be an extremely busy week. Um, but look out for information about that. Now that we've seen what everybody else is doing, because there are a lot of people doing the virtual conferences now to catch up, um, you know, we, we're learning from what they've done, picking the good bits, but coming up with a lot of our own stuff, which is even better and bigger. And we've got some big names and some, some, some fun for you. I, you know, we, we need to make it fun. Uh, life's tough enough. So let's, uh, let, let's have a great couple of days of conference. Jackie. You're, you're being very busy online this afternoon, so I'll go through a couple of the comments on the questions. Kirsty's come up and said, uh, I assume this is for the summit more or for our ICB TV, more from me, but you don't really want to see more of me, and more from Paula. So there you are, Paula, as you're listening. Kirsty wants to hear more of you. And Kirsty also says, and the sock man, John, question. Maybe he right. can be good for the third year in a row. The sock man. Well, I'm, I'm afraid I've got some bad news for anybody that wants more of Paula B.C. Smith. Apparently, she's taken to cycling and there's a lot less of her than there has been before. So, <laughs> uh, well, well done, Paula, for that one. You know, she'll well probably done. kill me now for having said that. Um, and this, this from a man that all, has, has actually lost nearly a couple of stone over the, uh, over the lockdown. So, yeah, there'll be a completely new me as well. You'll be, get, you'll be getting less of a lot of us. But anyway, <laughs> it's probably a good thing in many ways. Yeah. Uh, um, and just to come back, just to finish off uh, the original comment about the false positives, it's to do with a uh, report from Professor Carl Hennigan on false positives to do with COVID that he thinks the results need tweaking. There are hundreds of thousands of tests being processed every day, even with the current issues. The tests aren't perfect. There are false positives. Even a tiny fraction of false positives would equal a huge percentage of reported cases. And does the government know how many? Very important. Yes, it is. Um, there's a lot going on about that, obviously, at the moment. So thank you. Thanks for that, Jeff. Um, John, um, I'm trying to find out who's the, who the sock man who is. The sock I mean, man is. Any have... ideas, Kirsty? <laughs> um, the tie man was obviously Peter, who kept changing his tie during the... Uh, Inspire to or virtually inspiring, but I, I can't think. Um, but we, John we will Connolly talk. from Receipt Bank. Ah. ah, John Connolly from Receipt Bank. Now, Kirsty, are you sure it's are you sure it's his socks you, you were interested in? Anyway, okay, <laughs> yeah, he, he did a really that's right. he he was talking about his, that's right. He he's a great speaker actually. He's a great speaker. He's yeah, done Kirsty's a couple of years for back. us. Kirsty's just come back and said, was it the Receipt Bank man? So yes, it looks as though it was Kirsty. Yeah. Um, so thank you yeah. for that. I, I, um, I remember what you mean now. Yeah. Couple on the chat line, just going back, someone else said, uh, hello, Keith Bath, Keith from Burwell in Cambridge, you're enjoying the presentation, thank you. And Sandra Rees is on, I said, hi, uh, back on site for a few weeks now, apple picking wages on a Friday. Well, I could think of better ways to spend my Friday. Than doing apple picking wages or worse ways to spend it. Um, thanks for all yeah, the back info to your over the core last few months. Is that back time to your of the year? Core element now? Sorry, the core no. element. Oh, he's on form today. Folks. Paula Beasley Smith, look at this, Paula. Sorry, need to go. Let's have a photo shoot. <laughs> God, I know. Uh, oh, do you know what? We're, we're, we're reaching hysterical stage. It's only 20 past two. We don't usually get there till an hour in. Um, Leander says, uh, enjoying a Friday without children. It's good to get back in the office properly, although already one staff member is off awaiting for a test for their child. Um, yeah, and that. Oh, uh, Leander, some of us have taken what you've lost. I'm sure that's not true, Leander. Um, yeah, our own Amy Copeland um, put her children back to school. They were there for almost a week. One of the teachers has uh, tested positive, so she's got them back home again. Um, so we're back to meetings with Amy and the occasional um, little girl popping her head around the corner and what have you. But uh, I think we've sort of got used to this. Um, yeah. Families are, are, are part of what we do every day and all day now, isn't it? So I, I yeah, think. I mean, I have to say, I'm actually going to see my son for the first time since before lockdown started. We've obviously spoken on Skype of things, but I haven't actually seen him face to face yet. And he works yeah. at school, and I'm just hoping that, um, you know, they're not going to get a problem between now and the, and the weekend. So, 
Well, we still have one member of our new team that we took on um, recently that we haven't met face to face. That's Maddie. So anybody that spoke to Maddie on the phone, I know she's going down extremely well. Everybody um, is lovely, loving talking to Maddie, as they are to everybody else, I have to say. But Maddie, uh, yeah, you've met her as often as I have I'm at the moment. So we're working on that. Um, and whilst we're talking about new people, I mentioned about a month ago that Sujay Patel was joining us because he was going to be the new onboarding person for our new members in practice. And he's going down an absolute storm. We've had so many people saying, this is great. This is fantastic. Um, as far as I'm aware, we're the only uh, one of the professional bodies that has an onboarder that brings you up and helps you through and helps you run your business and various other things and get started. And uh, so, so that's great. If, if you need help, give us a call. He's going to start booking up appointments um, rather than him ringing you if you want to ring him and, and, and get some information. Uh, and I know that he, Jackie and others are working on various little training modules that we can do. Uh, the idea of asking all these questions is to find out what you need so that if there is a common need, we can create that as a, a little video link or an extra training course or, or whatever it might be. Um, you know, we like to get feedback here at the ICB. We don't take it as an affront. If you're saying we're not doing something, okay, fine. Tell us what it is you want and we will, within good reason anyway, uh, do our best to get that out there for you. That's, uh, we've always worked that way and uh, we, we will continue to do so. So, um, and if, if you're enjoying speaking to some of our people, let us know. Obviously, if you're not, let us know as well. Um, but let, let's get in even balance. That, that would be fantastic. Um, and let's okay. have a look. Um, on one, thing, one from Nicola. I'm, now, now, Gary, I'm going to let you do that because although I am of part Welsh origin, my Welsh pronunciation is not good. Yours is far better than mine. So I'm going to let you take Nicola's comment. Way too much. I haven't got to that one yet. I don't think I've got. Answer, it's nice to hear all those comments. Makes my Friday reconciliations much more fun listening to you in the background. Natalie from sunny Cheltenham. Excellent. Um, uh, Nicholas yeah, yeah. is in the question. I've got that one. So this is on the questions. Yeah. Yo, um, now, wait a minute. This was on television last night for some I know, reason. and I can't remember. <laughs> Rosa Kinon Taff, isn't it? Is it Sinon or Stinon? Well, why is it you, isn't it? So is that Conon Taff? Conon Taff? Well, it's definitely Ronda because of Ronda Valley. Um, why was it on television last night? Oh, because I can't of remember. the lockdown. They had a, they, the, um, because they can't move That's right. the county boundary. The, in, the, That's um, him. the reporter yeah. had stepped just outside to do his report before the lockdown. I remember that. Somebody else with a border control problem. I don't know. I have lockdown yeah. zone, but there wasn't any border control when I came in this morning. So all good yeah yeah nicola i'm i'm sorry to hear about that i mean we're all up and down daily and it really is confusing and uh, they're trying to encourage everybody to go back to the office but you can't meet your own family members and um yeah i i'm glad i didn't try when i was at school one of my um, masters um suggested to me i should become a politician because he said you never answer a question in a straightforward <laughs> manner and it will work well uh, and June seems to back everybody up on that. She says, why can't you just say yes or no occasionally? You know? oh. uh, but I am really glad I didn't go into politics. You know, I, I couldn't stand what's going on at the moment. I mean, whether you're on uh, whichever side of the, the green sofas you're sitting on, you, you're up to a hiding for nothing, you know. So, dear, I'm, yeah, I'm really pleased about that. And uh, anyway, it just shows how clever people were at giving you career guidance in those days. Um, Actually, so, you're talking about the green benches. There was, um, I forget what it was on last night. Um, I think I was catching up on the Mary, new Mary oh. Berry show and she was doing the, uh, the Thames this week and she was going down under Lambeth Bridge on Westminster Bridge on a, um, uh, on a um, police, police boat. And I didn't realise, Gary, and I'm, I'm sure you did, and I should do as I'm a Londoner, that apparently um, Lambeth Bridge is painted red because it's at the... House of Lords end of Houses of Parliament, and Westminster's painted green because it's on the common side. So somebody said on the television last night, I think it's that way around. I wasn't aware of that, were you? No, I wonder if that's... Bridge and Westminster Bridge. So if, yeah, and apparently one's red and one's green because it's the, the, side, the end of the Houses of Parliament that they, they are. I never knew that little bit of information, but it is Friday afternoon, so I may have got it wrong. Um, no, I would make all, that would make sense, of course. Yeah, well, yeah. I always thought the red 
something to do with the um, uh, what's he called? Uh, um, whose palace is just over the bridge, isn't it? It's on the other side of uh, Lambeth, Lambeth Bridge. Lambeth Bishop Palace. Bishop of Canterbury's Palace, isn't yeah. it? In Lambeth. Yeah, yeah. It something to do with him, but oh well, you might be Absolutely right. Absolutely nothing at all to do with Thank Furlough, it's Friday, but. Um, uh, any other right? The one thing that um, I could just drop in, um, Gary mentioned about looking at uh, new topics and things that we're going to be looking at. Um, one of the things that I'm going to be looking at, and I have mentioned this before, is that the new regulations ca are coming out to do with um, new EU tariffs from the 1st of January. And talking mm -hmm. about watching seminars, um, they're one of our approved companies, so I'm quite happy to, to mention them. Um, Avalara have been running a three-day online summit and I have to say I listened to quite a few of the presentations which I found was excellent they were absolutely superb and one was on EU tariffs and one was on what's likely to happen with VAT on Brexit now I have to say even though they were very good I'm still no wiser and I'm still trying to get my head around it so I, I will get something out to you on what's happening um, hopefully in the next newsletter and um, I will try and start to make sense of it all. I've just about got my head around tariffs. We still don't know what's happening about that next year because it's going to depend on whether um, our Prime Minister actually manages to do a deal with Europe or not. So I think um, we're going to have to move very, very quickly towards the end of this year because we haven't got that many. I think Terry Ram popped up a little while ago. You were talking about Christmas, Gary. He says it's 105 days to the new year. So that's all the time we have to get it right, folks. And I think we're going to be yeah. working to a very tight deadline with things like um, EU VAT uh, or not EU VAT, because if we don't have a deal, an agreement with them, we are going to be considered with Europe as exactly the same as any other non-EU country. So no business to business VAT. You're going to have to charge. The uh, one-stop shop is coming in, um, which reminds me, a couple of weeks ago, I asked if anybody is involved in import-export and would be interested in getting together on a focus group. If you're involved in this, um, import-export that one-stop shop, do contact us and we'll, we'll, we'll get this group together. Um, I think I've got three on there at the moment. Three people have contacted me. So if there's anybody else listening, and you're involved in this sort of thing at the moment, then uh, please get in touch and we'll we'll get a chat group going to see if we can figure it out between us. I'm sure some of you have probably got a far better idea of what's happening than I have because you're actually doing it. So, Leander Dada was saying, my parents are due to visit this weekend from Glasgow down to sunny Cornwall, but have to had to cancel as they cannot stay with me as there'll be more than six of us, but they can stay in the pub across the road and we could sit in different tables. Uh, will you? Yeah. Anyway, it's, uh, that's yeah. a difficult one because, interestingly enough, um, I have uh, well, I was supposed to be going to an 18th birthday party next Saturday, and uh, there are 13 of us, and apparently we can't even sit at three different tables in the restaurant. So, um, my poor grandson is trying to decide what he's going to do about his 18th birthday party at the moment. So we're not sure what's happening there. So this rule of six is. A nightmare because you can um, you can't even stop to talk to people in the park if you're more than six and that's the reason I'm going to my son because if they all came to us it was going to be a group of seven on Sunday so I'm going to leave my other half here at home and go up and then we'll be a group of six so hopefully that will be fine um, wow. right Leanne has come back and said will you be doing anything on VAT reverse for building and construction Yes, Leander, we will be. And if you have clients in that, I've got a lot of information already that we've given out to the focus group. Leander, can you just stick a yes or a no up and say, yes, you want to join or, or no? Because if you do, I can get you on the list. So just pop a yes or a no up, please. And I'll drop your... I'll drop that down. We've had an inquiry from... Lucinda, Lucinda, hi, says uh, she hasn't noticed anything yet about our increase in fees this year. We know, don't you normally put them up in March? Uh, Lucinda, yes, we tend to put them up by cost of living rise. Uh, we haven't put any rise through this year and don't intend to because we think you've got enough things to be getting on with rather than us want more money from you. Uh, so thank you everybody for paying your fees on time and enabling us to carry on to support you. Uh, but there won't be any fee rise this year. Uh, and no, we won't be doubling it next year. Uh, we'll see how next year goes. But uh, thank you very much for that. Because on, on, the, on the positive note, and thank you to 
the thousands of people who saw my uh, tweet recently and, and my LinkedIn thing about how many new clients everybody's got and how well things seem to be going. Um, and yeah, you know, uh, we're all working hard on this, but ICB is putting more money into everything it can do. It's taking money out of its, uh, its, its surplus, its reserves, because we know that you need more help, you need more guidance. We've been a little bit buckling under the pressure because of the amount of uh, information you want from us and guidance you want from us. So uh, we've actually uh, employed six new staff since lockdown uh, and uh, they're all on board doing all sorts of things. Sue Jay is one of them I mentioned before, but um, six new staff. We've not furloughed anybody. We wouldn't have an ability to furlough anybody because everybody is needed. Um, and you know, we've been. I'm sure some of you have seen in, in speculative information in the some of the uh, press recently that um, you know a couple of the the large bodies have got problems at the moment, and one of them is suggesting they're going to uh, lose 30% of their revenue this year, so they'll be getting rid of about 20% of their staff. I mean, that's horrendous. I feel really sorry for these people. Um, uh, for the people who are working for the organisations, but also for the members who are presumably not quite getting the, the service they wanted. I mean, one of the decisions we took right at the very beginning was we needed to keep exams running, uh, we needed to keep endpoint assessments going for uh, apprenticeships, and we've absolutely done that. And, and our exams team have worked fearlessly, including Jackley, and endlessly to get things right. Um, proctored exams, online exams, um, uh, that we've really taken off and, and from what I can see everybody else is is now sort of coming around to it trying to give it a go but they're coming in a little bit late in the day to making a big difference um, our exams are um, considerably up on last year I mean you know we, we've got record numbers at the moment because people have got perhaps a little bit more time I don't know what it is or a little bit more I must get this done because I need to qualify as a bookkeeper the business out there and I need to be there um, and you know so thank you all for your continued support you know we are here to serve you and um yeah we, we're a, as a not-for-profit organization we, we don't keep money in the bank um so you know but what bits in there at the moment we're spending back on you all to to make sure that you get all you want from us um, so long may that continue um just to go back to thank fellow it's Friday of the furlough stuff um, into my email box literally about uh, three minutes ago came the latest uh, email from HMRC on uh, COVID-19 updates. If you get the emails from HMRC about that, you will get it this afternoon. Uh, just a couple of reminders. Um, from the 1st of October, um, HMRC, the CJRS payments dropped to 60%. So your clients are going to have to put 20% in on that. Um, the employees will still get 80% of their uh, furloughed salary as normal. So the company is now paying 20% plus employers, NICs plus employers pension contributions. Um, make sure your data is right. You have to have obviously the correct data, otherwise repayments are going to be delayed. Um, there's a little bit in there on uh, what to do if you claim too much in error. Now I mentioned that at the start of the session about HMRC are starting to investigate. If you uh, voluntarily uh, contact them to say you've paid too much, then there won't be any issues with it. Um, you have 90 days uh, to repay any money from the date you received anything to which you are not entitled. Um, how to let them know if you claim too much. I have to say there is nothing in this email that says how to contact us if you didn't claim enough, which is not surprising. And um, again, there's another um, a comment here on uh, phishing scams. So watch out for um, any phishing scams that are coming in on, you know, we'll get loads of money back from you. Phishing with a PH. Fishing with a PH, yes. Oh, okay. Yes, fishing with a PH, not an, not an F. Um, and another email's come in um, from, oh, this is uh, Alison. Thank you if you're listening in. I've got your email about the VAT reverse charges. So, yeah, I've got that. Alison, thanks. That's coming to my box. So, right. Okay. We've, um, we've had a bit of news this morning about one of our former um, 
members uh, who fell foul of ICB, a particular uh, woman who in 2016 we didn't get on very well with and uh, she wasn't doing things quite as we wanted and, and she was expelled from us. Um, she's, she's just come to court and been found guilty of embezzling money uh, oh. because we took a practice license off her. She decided to go into employment and unfortunately whilst in that employment she took, took money from the company. So um, I, I, it's not finalised yet so I can't carry that in the newsletter but as soon as that is done and, and she gets her sentence I'll, I'll include it in the newsletter. But uh, ICB does do a lot to uh, chase up its members in practice, but that is slowly now filtering down to all members because we have a lot of members who are not in practice, but they're not covered by the sort of same laws like money laundering and, and all the rest of it, or, or don't tend to be if they're in employment. So we're extending it and we're extending our rules and laws to make sure that you know, we, we can inform employers if, if somebody's bad or we, we can, we can um, you know, put some sort of bad mark against them because these poor employers, small businesses who don't realize uh, the first thing the person does is say, oh, I'm, I'm with the Institute of Certified Bookkeepers. And for some reason, so many employers just don't check people out. You know, I, the number of times we've been asked for a reference, um, it's, always, it's obviously always for good people, um, but the, there must be other times when people are just not bothered. I, I think it's, it's, it's wrong. If, if you get a reference, you should actually do it. Um, right, what's this from? Julie... Uh, right, Julia Williams, it's much easier to get through the HMRC to notify an overclaim than it is to notify an underclaim. Yeah, I think that's what you were just saying, Jackie. Yeah, well, the overclaim you can do online um, and it's easy, but the underclaim you actually have to bring them and justify and everything else. Um, so I have spoken to a couple of people actually who have now gone back and looked at what's been claimed and it has been underclaimed for a number of reasons and uh that they were looking into how they were going to manage to get the extra the extra funds back so yeah and just on another happy note about about uh, lockdown and everything i mean the, the conjecture at the moment is that the entire country will be locked down for a short sharp shock to try and stop the uh, the move of the coronavirus um infection rate again um Wow, it's just going from bad to worse to bad again, isn't it, really? And we yeah. really don't know what's going on. It's, it's, it's quite a worry. I mean, down here in London, um, you'd think nothing had ever happened. People, you know, out there, they're going to restaurants, they're going to the shops. Okay, everybody is, tends to be wearing a face mask, but uh, it's almost as if nothing has happened. And I, it just worries me that, uh, you know, we're going to see a sudden surge as well. Uh, but anyway, we'll... Yeah, interestingly enough, there was a, a picture on the on the news, I think it was last night, the night before, about the Red Lion Pub, which is opposite HMRC in, in Whitehall. Now, I have to say, it is it is an establishment that I have had the odd orange juice in after HMRC meetings. <laughs> and they were just literally standing around outside as close as anything. They certainly weren't, you know, and it's only a tiny hostelry, so um, there's not much room inside anyway. And so outside, everybody was standing around us. Yeah, so nothing had happened. Oh, yeah. <sighs> However, 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 um, don't forget, please, my earlier request uh, for anybody that, uh, from anybody, any of you that want to come up with some ideas for anything you'd like to see at Summit, something that you want us to cover. Don't worry that you think somebody else might have covered it because chances are everybody else is thinking the same and we never get to hear about it. So, you know, we don't mind getting dozens of you saying you want something. In fact, if anything, that's better because it shows that more than just one person is going to sit there with a happy look on their face. Um, we are anticipating um, thousands of people coming to um, our virtual summit. And uh, so, you know, get, you get your chance to have your say, get it in there quick, and we'll make sure that works. Uh, where are we? It's quarter two. I think we've done on the questions. Anything else more for you, Jackie? Or um, I don't think so. I think I've covered everything. Um, my, my next task is to start looking at things that are coming on in the future. So. Once the furlough winds down, I'm going to, my, my next big task that I'm hoping to start talking to you about is what's going to happen uh, okay. when we go over to the 1st of January. Sorry, go yeah, ahead. I have idea when the feedback will be coming to us from the uh, tax agent strategy uh, white paper that we contributed to, you contributed to? No, I haven't heard anything yet. I don't, um, we've, put, we've put three in at the moment. Um, I've, uh, I haven't heard anything back from any of them. So I think it's normally a couple of months before that comes back. 
Um, and as I say, it's part it's part of the white it's part of the white paper and the finance bill. Um, I have to say, I don't think much is going to change apart from what HMRC has suggested, unless um, individuals come up with some fantastic new blue sky thinking that perhaps HMRC haven't thought of. So I think I know pretty much what I can predict is going to happen with those. And there are certainly things that, that we agreed with. So um, the next one up is the review on capital gains tax, which I'm going to start looking into. That's now due. That's just been deferred to November from middle of October to November, the submission date for that one. So we're looking, those of you who know capital gains tax, they're looking at trying to, it's the Office of Tax Simplification, so they're looking at trying to simplify down how capital gains tax works, so it's certainly one that will be good to simplify. We had a, a, another hello. Hello, I'm, I presume this is Yogita, or um, Yogita Owen from Newbury, you're an ICB student, well done. Um, and uh, yeah, can I have the email, email about that reverse, please? Uh, so please tell me if I've uh, said your name incorrectly, Yogita, um, and also where that name comes from. That sounds sort of, um, oh, no, that's all right. I thought you were coming back immediately. I thought that was quick. This is Leandro again. Um, uh, yeah, Jeff, interesting name. Where, where does that come from? That sort of sounds like sort of Danish or possibly just something like that, do you think? Something, uh, that, that's my guess. So please put me right on that. Leander has come back again to say, best practice to implement the apprenticeship would be good for Summit. Right. That's a good one. That is a good one, yeah. Yeah. Leander, um, if you're thinking about um, apprenticeships, please let us know because uh, there's a, uh, oh, Yugita oh, says. Lithuania. Oh, Lithuania. Lithuania. Oh, great. Um, Lithuania is a lovely country. I've been there a couple of times and, uh, uh, cold on occasions, but very nice country. Um, that's nice. Uh, yeah, sorry, Leander, if you want to talk to somebody about about um, apprenticeships, please let us know because uh, Jack is one of our experts on apprenticeships, but we've got a couple of others as well. And we'd, we'd like your comments to see what you're trying to do with it, how well you're doing with it, and if, if it's working for you, if, if you do it. So thank you for that. Um, um, interestingly so enough, we've um, we just had a first look at the level five payroll apprenticeship which is being applied for at the moment so um we're, we're looking at doing that one so that's the next one so the level two um account stroke finance apprentice is has been released and we're just uh finalizing our endpoint assessment for that so if any that might be useful for members actually the level two if you're looking at taking on a new trainee um, it might be useful to look at the apprenticeship for that because the way that's working with the level two for the first time it includes a compulsory qualification one of which is our level two certificate in bookkeeping um, there are only four uh, organizations who are involved in that who have approved qualifications we're one um, two of them I think are unlikely to go down the EPAO route endpoint assessment organization route and I think the other two will be fighting out between us. But I think there's, um, there might be a possibility for members, if you want to take on a trainee uh, or someone, and the apprenticeship might be a way through for you now that we have the level two, because it exactly matches our level two qualifications. So have a think about that. And if anybody's interested in that, I think, Gary, get an email into us and we'll, we'll see yeah. where, where we go from there. And if you're taking on somebody under 23, there's quite a nice grant available as well. Yeah, it's practice. about £1,500 at the moment towards it. Yeah. And yeah, also, yeah. the other thing is that um, with the what, what happens with the cost of it is that if you're not a large company um, with over £3 billion employment bill, which I wouldn't think many of our members are, um, you currently have to put 10%, have to pay 10% towards the cost of the training. So the grant will more or less offset that because I think the training costs, the full training costs are 950 pounds. So you'd have to put in 950 anyway. So the grant to take a young person on would cover that. It would also cover the cost of the, their exams. Um, and you can also look at the rates that you're gonna pay them if they're very new into training, first year apprenticeships. Um, the level Don't two apprenticeship Sorry? Don't you still get apprenticeships free if you've got fewer than five employees, or has that, that gone there? 
you've got me on that one. I'm not sure, but at the moment it won't cost you any. I'd have to look that one up. Sorry, it, it, I, there was always a 10% contribution, but I know there are grants available. And if you take on someone under 21 23. or 23, right. yeah. Yeah, 23 at the moment. Um, I got a little ping just on my phone. It's a WhatsApp from uh, the marketing team saying, you've mentioned Summit already. I'll have people queuing up for tickets and we're not quite ready for them. And lo and behold, I've had yeah, a number just... saying, when will we be able to book tickets for the Summit? I'm honestly not sure. Not it won't yet. be long. I think it'll probably be during next week. But um, because of this new piece of software, as I say, I haven't literally signed the transfer to pay them today um and you know which is which is an eye-watering amount of money but nonetheless uh i presume we've got to set it up a little bit first i don't know i'll see if somebody will give me a clue before we disappear if not i'll talk to you about it next week but as soon as, soon as possible um so there'll be lots of sessions there'll be keynotes there'll be little virtual booths that you can go into to see your um your favourite exhibitors or whatever. It's interesting that Amy has uh, been doing the Wednesdays, as you know, Amy Copeland, talking uh, where she's getting two pieces of software, uh, two members talking about opposite bits of software to see which is the best, etc. Virtually all of our members have said they first came across this piece of software that they're pushing at a conference, at our summit, you know, which is brilliant mm -hmm. because uh, we're, we're now able to replay that to our sponsors and say, here we are, look, they only heard about you because they came to the ICB summit. And uh, so, so that'd be great. So um, we do need to get you together with people. You know, it's where you learn. It's where you learn from your, your colleagues. It's where you learn from uh, hopefully our speakers and uh, you get to see new stuff. And Wow, the amount of stuff that's coming out of software houses at the moment. Everybody's trying to do everything. Um, everybody's trying to do everybody else's job, which is sometimes a bit annoying. But um, now is the time because it's a it's an open market, and, and you can really play people off each other and get a good deal. Uh, and I haven't said that, but you know, yes, obviously, yes, you can. And uh, yeah, when will we be able to book tickets for the summit? Uh, yeah, I will let you know as quickly as I can. I don't know at the moment. Uh, and I don't know how the pricing is going to work either, because uh, we've got, again, a few surprises up our sleeve with that one. Oh, right. Jackie, I think um, I'm about done on everything I've got to say here. I haven't, I haven't noticed anything yeah. else I've got to say. I, um, anything else. I think we've answered all the questions. Um, and I hope everybody is liking our two o'clock. Uh, I must... Well, we were saying before, Jackie and I, that we almost slipped up and didn't do it today because we'd forgotten it was two o'clock or we, we weren't quite uh, quite aware of that. I was sitting there doing something in, in the room next door, writing up a report and uh, suddenly realised it was five to two, so never mind. Uh, so I hope you are enjoying it. Um, and uh, the time is a little bit flexible at the moment because we're just going to see how things go. And I know that several people have said that two o'clock falls bang in the middle of one school run and another school run if you've got two children. I don't think we're going to be able to get it right for everybody, but if we get it right for the majority. Uh, so all those of you who are sitting at home at night and you're picking this up on recording, hello. <laughs> Sorry, you can't ask, ask live questions of us today, but please send in any that you've got. And Jackie spends almost her entire life answering questions for people nowadays. So, uh, you know, and so do others. So and I tell, I tell you one fun. thing, Gary, they're getting very, very complex. I tell you, I, I want to go back long in these of the days, in the early days of ICB when I used to take technical crews, when they were on double entry bookkeeping. That yeah, was when they're I complicated, was a lot yeah. Easier. Um, just a quick note from Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Um, he says, I believe it's 95% funding from government through the apprenticeship for non levy pairs. I know it used to be 90%, that's probably changed now, but the grants that are available if you take someone out over the next couple of months. Um, which is obviously to help out with job seeking and everything um, is pretty well going to make it that you're going to get sufficient money that yeah. you can get all your training free. So um, anyway, if anybody is interested, right. then uh, please do contact us and we will try and uh, see what we can do to help you. So Jackie, goodbye. Have, we hope you have a great weekend. We look Absolutely. forward to seeing you again next week. Um, and if obviously anything really urgent crops up, we'll see you even, even sooner than that. But at the moment, yeah. things be working away about Barbara Burek. Thanks you for thank you both. Enjoy our get togethers and always learning little things. Yeah, it's it's good to talk, it's good to meet, it's good to zoom as they now say days. But yeah. uh, anyway, 
Thank you very much, Jackie. Okay. And I'll see you next week. Thank you, Have everybody, for coming on. Have a good weekend, uh, Dawn. Bye. Bye. Bye.